Hello and welcome to Dixie Storytime World. Gus and the Secret Door Gus was staying with his granny and grandpa during the holidays. He loved their old house. One afternoon, Gus spotted a line of ants marching along the wall at the end of the garden. He kneeled down and watched them quietly. He noticed that they disappeared behind some bushes. Gus pushed the bushes aside and there, in front of him, was a tiny door. It was a strange door with no handle and no lock. Gus pushed it as hard as he could, but it would not budge. Very mysterious. At supper time, Gus was still thinking about it. He asked, What's that tiny door at the end of the garden? Where does it lead to? How do you open it? Is there someone on the other side? His granny said, Door? What door? There are no doors at the end of the garden. Then she said, I would rather you didn't play down there too much. It could be dangerous. Just then, Grandpa cleared his throat as if he was about to say something. Gus looked at him, hoping for an answer, but Grandpa didn't say anything. After supper, Gus went to Grandpa's bedroom. He stood at the end of the bed and said, You know about the door, don't you, Grandpa? Grandpa patted the bed and Gus jumped up. Grandpa said, When I was little, I used to spend a lot of time exploring the garden. One day I discovered a little hole in the wall. I looked and I thought I saw movement on the other side. I called out, but nobody answered. I thought I could hear voices and laughter and even music. Grandpa acted out the story as he told it. I tried to make the little hole bigger so I could see through to the other side, but the wall was very hard. For days I dug and chipped and scratched. In the end I borrowed my father's hammer. I hit the wall so hard that part of it fell down. Then I discovered. Gus leapt to his feet and stood on the bed shouting, What? What? What did you see, Grandpa? Grandpa was quiet for a moment, then he whispered, if you want to know, go to the bottom of the garden very, very early tomorrow morning. Knock five times on the tiny door and wait. Off you go to bed now. I need some rest. Gus couldn't sleep that night. He tossed and turned, feeling hot. When the clock in the hall struck five times, he jumped out of bed, took his torch and tiptoed out of the house. Outside it was dark and very cold. Gus walked quickly down to the end of the garden. By the time he got to the tiny door, he was so scared that he could hardly breathe. He slipped behind the bushes and knocked five times on the door. Then he waited. Suddenly, the tiny door shook and creaked. Then it opened very slowly. Gus looked through the opening and saw two huge feet, two legs as big as tree trunks, a big round tummy, and a giant's head. It was a giant. A real enormous giant. Gus froze like a statue. He couldn't move or speak. The giant sat down and said, Hello, my name is Olaf. You must be Gus. Gus couldn't believe his eyes. Olaf the giant picked Gus up in his huge hand and placed him gently on his shoulder. Gus looked around him at the world of giants. The trees were huge. They were also completely hollow, so the giants used them as houses. Their leaves were as soft as feathers and all different colours. The sky was bright blue, with not a cloud in sight. Gus soon found out why. As soon as a cloud appeared, a giant swallowed it up in one gulp. Olaf whistled loudly, and dozens of giants came to welcome Gus. They were so big and they talked so loudly that they made the ground shake. All the giants wanted to get to know Gus, so Gus moved from hand to hand and shoulder to shoulder. Then one giant girl with red hair began to sing in a very sweet voice. A smaller giant played on a strange musical instrument that looked like a gigantic umbrella. The music made Gus want to dance. Soon it was time for Gus to go home. Olaf went with him as far as the door. He said, when I was small, I loved playing in the shade of the wall. One day, a little person like you knocked it down. It was your grandfather. We immediately became friends. 
we built this little door together and we hid it behind the bushes so that nobody would discover our secret it's your secret too now gus gus said goodbye to olaf and hurried back home he got there just in time for breakfast but he was so tired that he knocked over his bowl of cereal twice his granny was worried didn't you sleep well gus did you have a bad dream gus said oh no i had an amazing dream grandpa smiled and whispered why don't you come to my room after breakfast and tell me all about it the end thank you for listening i hope you enjoyed this story i'll see you soon in the next one always remember to be good polite and kind thanks for watching and listening enjoy more stories at dixie storytime world on youtube we're also available on the Kids YouTube app.